How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Your word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. My heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very end. May my cry come before you, Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. These prayers from Psalm 119 remind us that the word of the Lord in Scripture is not just an abstract idea. It's something that we feed upon, that we ingest, we delight in like we delight in honey. We taste and chew it. We delight in God's word together in congregations as we sing it, as we pray it, as we set our hearts upon obeying God's word. And when we are in need, we cry out to the Lord, not just for our problems to be fixed, but to be given a new understanding according to your word, as the psalmist says. But there are a lot of misunderstandings and even conflicts that come up in how we understand the word of God, how we approach scripture and different approaches to scripture. So I'd like to start first with a basic question. What does it mean to interpret the Bible as Christian scripture? Although it may seem like an obvious question, there are a lot of different ways to approach this. For example, I've seen that a lot of Christians approach the Bible a little bit like a smorgasbord. I want a little bit of carrots here, a little bit of potato here. I want a little bit of self-esteem boost here. Um, I want a little bit of encouragement about forgiveness here. There's picking and choosing, but nothing that really holds it together. At other times, Christians approach the Bible for secret knowledge about the future, perhaps about future political events and when the end times um, might be coming with the, with the second coming of Christ. Or other times, um, Christians approach the Bible for a diet plan. You know, maybe the Bible has it's the answer book, so maybe it has that secret diet plan that will help me lose those you know, 10, 20, 30 pounds that I'd like to lose. And even on a Christian radio station that says things like encouraging words from your Bible, this gives us a certain approach to interpreting the Bible, that the Bible has encouraging words, which is good as far as it goes, but um, it may also narrow our scope when there are things in the Bible that we need to wrestle with, just as Jacob wrestled with the angel. Now, when it comes to approaching the Bible and different approaches to the Bible, not even scholars necessarily approach the Bible, as I would say, as Christian scripture. A lot of scholars approach the Bible interested in ancient history or interested in ancient culture. And as valuable as that is, that's different from approaching the Bible as the Word of God. So what does it mean to approach the Bible as the Word of God? Well, in explaining this, I'm going to draw upon an approach of early Christians, really from the second century on, we have something called the rule of faith, which is a rule by which we interpret scripture of what scripture is doing in our lives together as a baptized community. And the basic idea is that Christians interpret scripture on a pilgrimage of growing in conformity to Christ. We interpret scripture as disciples of Christ, growing in love of God and love of neighbor. And we interpret scripture filled with the Spirit, looking forward to the day when we will see God face to face. So if you have an interpretation of scripture that does not lead toward love of God and love of neighbor, then it's simply not a Christian interpretation of scripture. You may be doing some interesting interpretation of the Bible, but it's not interpreting this as Christian scripture. Or if you have an interpretation of scripture that is not leading you deeper 
into your life in Christ and conformity to Christ. Again, that's not a Christian interpretation. All interpretations of scripture which are distinctively Christian will lead us deeper into the life and the way of Jesus Christ because that is our identity. People who have been united to Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. The second basic question I'd like to deal with here is what is a reformed approach towards scripture? Well, a reformed approach includes what I have already um, said about reading scripture in light of Jesus Christ on this pilgrimage of coming to know God. But it also has some other characteristic features. My favorite resource for exploring what the Reformed tradition has to say about approaching scripture is the Belgic Confession, which is one of the confessions of the Reformed Church in America. The Belgic Confession starts out by saying that we know God by two books. The book of creation, which it says is a beautiful book, which testifies to God, and the book of scripture. In the book of creation, on the one hand, it is a, a beautiful book. We are to read it in, as creatures of God, and it testifies, the Belgic Confession, to God's eternal power and divinity. But the result does not lead us to a saving knowledge of God. Instead, all these things are enough to convict us and to leave us without excuse. And the reason it says this is because this is what the Apostle Paul says in Romans 1.20. When, on the one hand, Paul gives an exalted view of the creation, how important um, both caring for and knowing the creation is, um, but precisely because we know about God and God's power through the creation, people are made without excuse in our sinfulness um, before God. So then the Belgic Confession says that it's in the second book, the book of scripture, that God makes himself known to us more clearly through his holy and divine word. It is as much as we need in this life for God's glory and our salvation. So the idea here is that Although we can and should learn from science, we can and should be attentive to learning from all different sources um, in our human life, as well as even in our knowledge of God, it is scripture which will give us the clearest way and is the ultimate authority when it comes to our knowledge of God. In fact, the Belgic Confession goes on to say that we must not consider human writings, no matter how holy their authors, to be equal to these divine writings. Therefore, we reject with our hearts everything that does not agree with this infallible rule. So this means that even the church's polity, even the church's, uh, all other aspects of the church's life, are underneath the authority of scripture, that no human construction, no human work um, has the authority that scripture does. And this leads us to a key idea about scripture in the Reformed tradition, which is sola scriptura, which means scripture alone. Now, some people might think that scripture alone means that Scripture alone is what we should consult as Christians when we are in the Christian life. So um, we shouldn't care what other Christians around the world think. We shouldn't care what you know Christians early, in earlier eras think. We just go to Scripture alone. But that's never what sola scripture has meant for the Reformed tradition. It also doesn't mean that we read it alone as individuals. Instead, we should read Scripture as communities and listening to others who are reading scripture, giving checks and balances um, to one another um, through the Spirit. But what sola scripture does mean is that 
Scripture is the final authority in all matters of faith and practice. It's because we believe that Jesus Christ speaks through Scripture by the Holy Spirit, and Christ is the head of the church. So you can't have any authority that is higher than Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ has chosen to speak through Holy Scripture.